This marina isn't as protected as our last one, but we're happy that Todd's able to work on the boat while I'm waiting for surgery in Alaska. If you can even hear me, this wind has blown a bunch of water out of the marina. We've lost almost a foot of our depth. And this boat is on its keel on the bottom. Many of the boats in this marina were abandoned after Hurricane Harvey. Anyone looking for a project boat? Our normal water line was about right there, and it's all the way down to there. That thing looks like it's almost gonna catch air when it's rocking, it's crazy. But we're gonna work anyway. Back to work. Todd and I started traveling in an RV eight years ago with seven of our 10 kids. One by one, they've flown the coop and started their own adventures. Now, after three years of fixing up a hurricane-damaged sailboat, we're ready to explore the world with our last three kiddos before they're gone, too. So, this is kind of how I spend most of my days, is laying in bed. I have the stint in and it's super uncomfortable. So, the issue is, do I take the medications and feel, like, really crazy, but at least I can sit up? Or, I spend most of my days laying down and I don't take the medications and I at least have a brain in my head. Some days I take it and some days I don't. My view from my daughter's bedroom is quiet today because the girls went to get their hair cut. My daughter is a hairdresser and has her own salon. I talked with Todd on the phone for a little while. Binge watched a whole bunch of world towning. It's a really cool show. They just been on a boat mm, a year or so. Um, give them a look and that is what we are doing. What I am doing. <laughs> so grab this end right here. Unroll it that way and kind of go around. So, so you just let that sit right there. Come on over here. Now this tape is a special tape. It's designed to stick to this plastic. Because I don't know how well it can work to this. So we got to stick it to the pipe and the, there has to be enough room to stick to this. Okay. Make sure you push it against the plastic too. We uh, wrapped the cockpit in plastic to try to keep as much of the fiberglass dust out of it as we can. This zipper thing, I screwed one of the two zippers up. They come in a two pack, so now I gotta go buy another two pack so I can use one of the two for the other side. But they're kinda nice because they uh, stick to this poly really well and then you just um, unzip it and then cut the poly out and now you have a zipper door. Isn't that pretty sweet? So we'll have one of those on each side and uh, that'll let us get in and out from the cockpit. So when we start grinding on this tow rail and sanding on it, that we're not sleeping with the stuff because I don't want to sleep with the stuff. And there's going to be a lot of sanding and a lot of grinding. So another thing I got to take off is this front plate that's mounted at the deck of the boat. boat. And I have no idea, it's got screws in it, but it might be also screwed and 5200 and epoxy, I don't know but I gotta try to get this off right here because it's just too close to the um, too close to the tow rail for me to get a good solid bedding of fiberglass so I gotta pull it off. Well, I'm afraid that's gonna come up easier than I thought. There we go. That looks like a crap load of 5200 to me. So one of the things that you can use to help get like this 5200 off this deck is one of these um, vibrating cutters with uh, a, a, they make a tip for it that doesn't have any teeth on it. That's just kind of a scraper blade. You want that to be really razor sharp. And another tip is, if you can get a spray bottle with some water to periodically spray 
the blade and the area you're working in, it'll keep it cooler. And if it, if it stays cool, then the stuff you're pulling off doesn't get all gummy and reattach itself or stick to your blade. So that gets the bulk of it off, but it's still down in the texture of the paint from the non-skid non on the deck. And that, I'm just gonna have to sand it, sand it down. <laughs> What are we doing? I'm you a COVID test so yeah. that you can have surgery <laughs> on Monday. <laughs> this will be my third COVID test in the last two weeks, three weeks. Just gotta have a COVID test to be able to go <laughs> anywhere. <laughs> and I have been negative, so keeping our fingers crossed that I'm negative because we have bought our tickets to go home and that if this surgery gets delayed by anything, I mean, I'm not sick, but that would be really terrible. There's grandbabies in the background, not Katie's baby. <laughs> Here within 48 hours or less. Okay. It'll probably be sooner because pre-op is expedited. Okay, perfect. Okay, you guys have a great day. All right, Thank thanks. You. That wasn't too bad because she didn't stick it up up here high high. It was just down here. So that wasn't too bad. I've only had one of the really, really awful aggressive nurses that was like, where's your brain? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've had one of those yet, thankfully. Well, it was pretty awful. You're gonna come to Alaska, don't come. February, February, March are really ugly. It's a little dark 30. 5 30 in the morning. Gotta get up, head in to do a job, make some money, pay for all this boating stuff. This is a good place to say thank you so much to our patrons whose support really makes a difference in our lives. Alright, here's what I need to do. I need to put all of those cabinets on that wall. Hopefully in time enough to get some work done on the boat. Let's get after it. There we go. That only took us about 20 minutes, right? <laughs> and we're out of here. Are you ready to go? Uh-huh. So that's our typical day when we're working, it's like doing cabinets. Get up early, work our butt off the whole day. Hopefully get home in time to do some boat work. Although today was a longer job than we thought. So we may not get any boat work done, but that is how it goes. Everybody and their dog is here to see me for my surgery. <laughs> We've got a car fall, two grandbabies, four daughters. So they're here to drop me off for my surgery. Nobody can come in because, you know, all of that crazy stuff is still going on. I think it's really dumb that people have to be alone in their most vulnerable. All right. I'm in my fancy outfit. We'll see you on the other side. Okay, I'm home. I'm on some good drugs. <laughs> but they took out five kidney stones. That's a lot, people. So hopefully now in just a little while, a week or so, I will be able to go home. Back to Texas. Back to the boat. Whoop whoop. Anyway, so yeah, it's all good news. There. My wife will love this edit here. <laughs> good morning, everybody. So I'm <coughs> getting ready to do some tow rail work. So I got to clean this off because I got to pull off some fixtures on the deck over here. And I got one in the V-berth area and I got one in the aft berth area and do a little bit of sanding and prep on the deck and we'll get going with the fiberglassing. I pulled the chain plate out yesterday 
So right here, that's where our insulation was. That's that's one of the reasons why we didn't glue it to the wall was we wanted to be able to remove it to get behind it to clean it or you know if we had to get to something. Are you ready, puppy? Are you ready? Is it done? So two of these guys didn't even go all the way through. So two of the four holes didn't even go through. That's crazy. Which ones were they, Gabe? Short ones. The two outside ones? Mm -hmm. I'm going to hand you the hammer. We'll just kind of gently tap that thing and see if we can get it loose. Like that. Just get it off the glue and tap off the best you can. Yeah, I got the slave labor going today. In my slave labor. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this thing is the bomb. This cup wheel, man. It really takes material off fast and easy, effortless. Uh, the grinder doesn't have to work too hard. It does a good job. I still got to use another tool to get in corners and behind objects, but but this one does pretty good. And then uh, we got the vacuum to try to vacuum up all this dust as much as we can. We hit that pretty regularly too. So awesome, going well. All right, so I wanted to explain to everybody what is going on with this tow rail and why it's such an issue. So this. This is the front piece that I cut off right up here because I didn't want it to be um, quite that far forward and I, it's easier for me to fiberglass around it if it's not so close to that um, anchor uh, roller deal assembly. I guess I gotta learn the names of it, right? So that's what it looks like from the outside, but if you turn it around, you can see it's got this little rabbit cut out of it. And that little rabbit is to go over the top of the deck joint that goes across the top of the hole where it changes elevations. But along the side of that, there is a gap. And I'll show you that right here. Right here. See that big wide gap? That's what happens. So if water gets in anywhere, anywhere along that tow rail, at any of the caulk joints, inside or outside, it finds its way into that channel, and then that channel is like a wide open river that allows water to travel from the front of the boat to the back of the boat, and any hole into the boat from there, it finds its way and drips into the boat. So that's why we're encapsulating this tow rail in fiberglass, is to prevent that from happening ever again, we hope. So. Uh, we've got it all prepped and ready to go, so I'll show you what that looks like. This is not a structural fiberglass project, it's a waterproofing project. So we don't need a large area of connection between the fiberglass and the deck hull. Uh, ultimately I'd like this to be a chemical bond process where we do all the layers and as they start to kick off we do the next layer. Uh, but I think today I'm going to do a little fillet, which is just a little curve at the bottom of the tow rail on each side to kind of fill in that fill in that joint where you you know like your caulk joint run your finger across it to make a nice little gentle curve for the fiberglass to run down and run run a, a curve out onto the deck instead of being a sharp 90 degree turn. They make disposable caulking guns for epoxy and it's like 60 what 65 right now you think? Yeah. 65 ish and I'm using a slow hardener so it still get, gets hot pretty fast, but it's kind of cool that you can um, caulk along this with this caulking gun and you can reuse it. Even when it dries, they say you can pop it out. So we'll see. And it's, it's the caulking tube. Caulking I didn't tube. want to correct you in the middle of your film, but. <laughs> yes. All right, here we go. Feel is it, is it set? Oh yeah, it's, it's starting to set up. Good. 
<coughs> these are gonna be the hardest things to do those around the chain plate. So inside where there's no obstructions is the easy part. The outside though is not the easy part, especially because it does tend to want to keep coming out the end, even if you pop the little button on the back. And part of that's because it's hot. Yeah, this is kicking a lot faster than the other one was. <laughs> you should be filming that, see what? Yeah, wrong person on the video. This is a family show. Oh my god, how do I shut it off? I'm exhausted. We are so grateful to have Leslie's help with this project while I'm gone. It takes a really good friend to juggle cameras and brave fiberglass dust. Thank you so much. All right, folks. How many of you check noon site regularly to uh, see what's going on in the world? Well, this just in. Yeah. I guess I gotta be a little more careful around here. All them pirates. Nice night tonight, though. What do you think, Denali? Hmm? Back on the boat. Closing activities for the evening. Ugh.